Right, so I'm going to talk about uh, a bill of materials editor that I'm working on for kidspace.org. Um, so kidspace.org is a project sharing platform where you pretty much at, at this stage you put stuff in a Git repository somewhere and send me a link or, or send me a pull request on GitHub to, to add your project. And the idea is to have this repository of, uh, of easily... Uh, replicatable designs. So on a Kidspace page, you have the, uh, a way to is to see what the what the PCB would look like, and you can uh, download the Gerber files, or uh, have the, it's got links here to go to Isla or PCB Way to have it made. And a lot, of, I spend a lot of time on these tools to automate the the parts ordering process. So there's buttons on there to, which uses a browser extension called the one-click bill of materials browser extension to automatically add uh, components to retailer shopping carts. So the the problem with this is obviously it's quite hard to for people to properly document their bill of materials, uh, and actually uh, even a lot of the projects on GitHub. Uh, on, on Kidspace already, they uh, don't have bill, bills of materials that are purchasable because it hasn't been fully documented. So it's quite a, I guess, a frustrating process for people to go through this. So I've been working on this editor tool right now. It's a standalone kind of uh, application, web application. The idea is to integrate this into Kidspace so that you, when you press edit, a project, edit the bill of materials on Kidspace, this would be, it would be something similar to this. Um, so I'm just going to show you like the workflow in this. Uh, oh, this looks out of date. There we go. This is the new one. Um, so the idea really here is you can, you can open your existing bill of material and it would, uh, and you can even um, import a uh, a KiCad PCB already. So we're going to try that. Um, so this is the the PCB from the ruler. Um, currently, this means it's thinking, <laughs> uh, create, and you can see. <laughs> right. Um, so you can import there. And it's, it, it grabs, tries to grab the descriptions of your project. Um, you can then look at this and maybe uh, reduce this down a bit. Really, this is a 1206 1K resistor. And then it's going to understand that, actually. Uh, so then you can go to DigiKey and see whether you want to buy that one. You can select it. Um, you can select specific parts here, um, and you can even even for these when it's when it's basically when it's, when this is green, it's pretty sure that it knows that you want this part. So I've been working on doing this auto filling, so it will select all these parts for you there. Uh, this magic wand means it's like this is already a part that you've selected. So it's really sure that you you want this part number in here. Um, so what's how am I doing on time? Five minutes ago. Five minutes ago, I should have stopped. Sorry? What, five minutes? Five minutes to go. Yes. Um, I can well I can go back to the demo. I'm just gonna finish off like because this is a software developer conference. Talk a bit about the. The, the actual this, the, how this is made. Um, so these are the kind of the features. Currently, you can import the bomb and you can import the KiCad PCB. You can quickly se select parts and then you can download a CSV file, which you can then use to uh, add a Kitspace project, or you know you can keep it for yourself. Uh, you the, the the plan with this obviously is to integrate it into Kitspace to have more CAD imports for all the different uh, CAD files and kind of grab the, the, the bill of materials information from there and help you make a proper bill of materials out of that. Uh, we want really better price information and like price summaries and 
being able to reduce the, the bill of materials by price to optimize for price or to optimize for what retailers you prefer or anything like that. We need more accurate price information to do that. Um, I've almost finished this part to then go from here, from the, uh, have a button here to kind of reduce the bomb bill of materials to your preferred retailer and then use the one-click bill of materials browser extension to, to buy the parts. So you can easily, from your bill of materials making process, go to your shopping cart. Um, so, nope. So the architecture is fairly boring. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of a language nerd, and for this, for all this Kidspace stuff, I just, I kind of, so far, I stick to JavaScript and uh, like modern, established, working ways in JavaScript. So it's a uh, kind of as the most, most the, a lot of the stuff is on the client side, and this application is kind of almost like a standalone. I, this is like, it's, it's statically, it's static hosting. And then the server side um, is uh, just uh, currently a single application that just kind of uh, hooks into other APIs and gets the information. Uh, it used to do some scraping as well. I've just stopped that, but I could, again, also use uh, scraping techniques to get the information into there. And the reason it's not just using the Octopod API is because they, there's some improvements on the stock information, the price information that we can get from other places. Octopod is a great API, but it's not perfect. Uh, so client side, like I said, really boring stack, uh, kind of modern, uh, using React, uh, using Semantic UI, which is like the, uh, the for the user interface. Um, it allows me to not worry so much about how things look, and I'm fairly happy with this, the kind of default style, styling for semantic UI, so I don't spend a whole lot of time on uh, how that looks. Uh, so the server side, more JavaScript, uh, Node.js, and the reason for this, or the that I keep using JavaScript is so that I can develop libraries that I can either use on the front end or on the server side, and I can pull them in and use them on both sides. Um, one of these libraries is is the Electrogrammer, which I've brief mentioned in the, in the talk last year at FOSDEM, which is a, I don't think we have time for this API demo. Uh, Electrogrammer is a, is a, a JavaScript library to parse electronic components descriptions, and this is what really what makes this tool uh, more usable than just straight up the standard Octopod search or API access. Um, uh, how, how am I doing on time? Uh, one minute. One minute. Uh, so um, I've just started uh, like trying to finance this project a bit more because I spend a lot of time on this. So I've just opened an uh, open collective. So if you start using these tools and you find them useful, please consider supporting these projects. There's other people, obviously, my cousins, the whole thing on Kidspace with the, how the Gerber, the Gerber preview of your board, that was, was an amazing project called uh, uh, PCB Stack Up by my cousins who uh, has done an amazing job with it. David Craven has helped me on Electrogrammer, and yeah, I th I'm hoping we're going to get more contributors. So I think uh, this kind of collective uh, way of receiving donations would work for this. Uh, maybe we have time for one question. If you. Would do, uh, sorry, I didn't. Thing, because you're actually duplicating a standard. Uh, we are, we're, 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 I wouldn't say we're duplicating a standard. We're making it, we're using the existing standards and the existing language that engineers use, but we're making it like a simple interface for uh, uh, understanding that language. 
or I, I guess I didn't understand your question fully. No, for example, the ISO publishes resistor standards. Yeah. And if you put the data up, you're conflicting with the ISO standards. Or um. Bringing a component leap, the leap for the component, the collection, the those component you must update before into the servers. It's usually what we do. Uh, there's no standard there. There is many ways uh, who made for this the famous factory where provide a files for you. So you just update it to the server and uh, he can recognize it. When you update a file, he can he can graduate a bone tables for you. Mm. I think there is no such standard. Well, well the, I guess the answer to the question is there is like the JEDEX standards and the other standards for how to how to uh, how to describe components, and we're trying to use all of that. We're trying to use all of that so that you can just write that name, and then we under like the 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 parser understands what you mean. Okay.